when we talk about uh, failing hydroxyurea, there are different ways of failing hydroxyurea. And that means either there is increased risk of phlebotomy, or there is a new need for phlebotomy. That means the red blood cells are starting to grow without control, despite the optimal dose of hydroxyurea. There is a progressive leukocytosis, or platelets start to go up. Patients may also have increase in the spleen or develop new symptoms that are not controlled well with hydroxyurea. All of these factors would indicate a failure of hydroxyurea. In that setting, ruxolitinib would help patients a lot. And we have a patients, a number of them, who comes through MD Anderson for a second opinion in these clinical scenarios. In that case, we would suggest ruxolitinib because it has been shown to markedly improve the symptoms within a few weeks, increase their quality of life, with also decreasing the spleen if it's enlarged and controlling the red blood cells, white cells, and platelets. So we would expect in a great majority of the patients, at least about 60 to 80% of the patients, to have a real benefit in controlling all five aspects that we look at within polycythemia vera to say this is a real clinical benefit. Practically, that means elimination of the phlebotomy need. That means elimination of our supportive medications for control of itching or fatigue or a night sweating. That also means increase in weight in patients that are losing weight because of increasing in the spleen. So you can imagine the whole spectrum of benefits with ruxolitinib beyond just controlling the red blood cell count. The starting dose for polycythemia vera is 10 milligrams twice a day for all patients. This is different than in myelofibrosis, for which ruxolitinib is also used. Here, everybody starts with 10 milligrams twice a day. Expectation is that about 10% of the patients may need less. That means 5 milligrams twice a day. And about 60, 65% of the patients may, may need more, meaning 15 milligrams twice a day, 20 milligrams twice a day, and some even 25 milligrams twice a day. But the medication should not be used daily. It has to be taken twice a day because it has a short life in a body, about three and a half hours half-life. So it doesn't really work if it's taken only once a day. In terms of a disease control with ruxolitinib after hydroxyurea, for which this medication is approved and it's widely available throughout the United States, my experience was excellent. Patients really rapidly develop improvements in the quality of life. If they have enlarged spleen, that would go away within a, a two months usually. There would be significant clinical benefit in all aspects of polycythemia vera. In terms of the symptom controls in patients that have long-standing history of polycythemia vera and do not do well on hydroxyurea, for which ruxolitinib is used, that is one of the most important aspects that I see right away. The symptoms are really uncontrolled in patients that have advanced features. This is poor quality of life that limits their enjoyment of everyday activities, enjoyment with the family. When you can eliminate an itching, a fatigue, a weakness, a night sweating, enlargement of the spleen within a few weeks, that is marked improvement that really is gratifying for everybody. The performance status and quality of life of the patients on ruxolitinib in general improves markedly in a short order. Performance status, that means how they perform, whether they can enjoy quality of life by doing activities that they used to do and cannot do anymore like go fishing or golfing. This is the real benefit that you see. The quality of life improves within a few weeks to the level that these patients have not experienced for years. Ruxolitinib is approved therapy for second line therapy in uh, polycythemia vera, patients that are intolerant or resistant to hydroxyurea. Within that group of patients, patients that have some liver damage or have some kidney damage need to be monitored very closely. The dose of ruxolitinib needs to be adjusted because it is affected by these organ functions. So liver function tests should be performed before therapy and on therapy if necessary. There should be also need to look at the kidney function because it's excreted through the kidney and those adjustments are necessary. In patients that have a history of chronic hepatitis or history of TB or some other atypical chronic infections, one needs to be cognizant of those because there might be a reactivation of a hepatitis or a TB, and certainly a consult to infectious disease specialist 
is in order if one contemplates therapy with ruxolitinib in a patient that is known to have exposure or a history of chronic infections.